It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, I'm kind of shy. So, <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. I I'm fresh off of the airplane from seeing my daughter graduate and walk across the stage this weekend. And I, I watched her Saturday night deliver remarks, um, you know, just thanking her family and thanking, thanking her parents uh, for, for leading her in a direction that um, is going to chart a new, a new way of life for our family. Um, and, and it just reminded me of why I do this work. And, and I'll say this in my remarks in just a moment, but I do this work as a love letter to my children and to Oregon's children. And I truly believe when you bridge the gap between opportunity and talent, then America is a much better place. There's so many young, talented, beautiful children out there who just need a shot. And I think, you know, Washington is, is failing us in delivering, you know, food. Today we're talking about um, school lunches for every child in America. We're talking about reproductive health access. We're talking about all of these things that will make America a much richer and, and much more alive place for every, or, uh, every American. And so I'm, I'm really excited at this opportunity. So I'll begin my formal remarks now. Um, good evening, everyone. It is with great pride that I introduce myself as now state representative, but now nominee, uh, Democratic nominee for Oregon's fifth congressional district. Um, I wanted to thank my family, Mark. Um, he's probably just finished dropping off his ballot. Um, and thank him. <laughs> Seriously, it was, it was six something when I was helping him fill it out. Um, I wanted to thank him for his steadfast support and for our four wonderful children, two of whom are now voters. Um, Christine, Ellis, Caroline, and Asa, they are my joy. As I said before, my work is a love letter to them. Um, it is the reason that I get up every day for them, their friends, their colleagues on their jobs and at the football team at uh, University of Oregon. I, I do this work for them. I wanted to also thank everyone here today and everyone who showed up to get us one step closer to the future that we want for this great state. My parents, James and Clara, always taught me the values of hard work, determination, and public service how we must stand up for others because, because it is the right thing to do and not because it serves your individual politics. I often share the story about how my mom says if, if our generation doesn't stand up, then we stand to lose everything her generation fought for, whether that's voting rights, whether that's reproductive rights, whether that's the right to have food and housing at a fair and reasonable cost. She was right. And in 2016, I stepped up and put my name in. I was scared and terrified. Um, but over the last eight years, I've, I've built a solid foundation. I know who I am. I know the people that I love. I know the state that I represent. And I know that I can do it better than anyone else on the ballot. As your representative in Salem, uh, in the past, I've looked at every bill with the lens of Will it make Oregon better and create opportunities for our children, both our sons and our daughters? Will it help working families and will it advance civil rights? And I know better than anybody else, unfortunately, Lori Chavez de Reamer hasn't been thinking that way in Congress. And I believe she makes her decisions with a very different set of criteria. Will it help me? Will it help my far right mega Republican donors? She voted in D.C. to restrict access to reproductive rights and then wasn't so truthful about her record back home in Oregon. And she's proudly endorsed Donald Trump while gutting funding for the critical services Oregonians rely on. <laughs> she's basked in the limelight of her MAGA friends in D.C. and has barely even visited the district. Sorry, I want to be respectful of the microphones here. Um, but I believe that our families deserve better, and our communities deserve better, and our country deserves better. And so that's why I'm proud to stand before you as the Democratic nominee for Oregon's fifth. So 
so I, I want to be brief, but I, I started off by telling you all that um, this, this weekend we had the opportunity to watch 400, sorry, 505 young black women at Spelman College walk across the stage, and they were filled with so much promise. And I looked at my daughter who wants to become a dentist and, and I've been following her journey um, with, with close admiration and love but also a little bit of trepidation because as she was trying to apply to dental school and trying to figure out where she was going to go, you know, she ran into $3,000 studio apartments in Boston. You know, she ran into how, many, how much money does it take to take the entrance exam, it's like $500. How many times am I going to have to take that? How much is, am I going to come out with student debt? And all of these things are, are issues that are facing our young people. And it is for us as the adults who love them to make sure that there is a brighter future for them, that, uh, that they can make sure that they have their access to their own health decisions. That was a big deal for her. She and her friend were talking about where they were going to go for medical school or dental school. And they were very clear. I'm going to go somewhere where my rights are protected. Right. So we know that as Democrats, we protect the right of people to not have the government in the exam room with them. And we know that the Republican Party wants her to have less rights than I did when I was her age. And so for me, enough is enough. Right. Washington isn't working for folks here in Oregon. And in fact, Lori Chavez de Reamer and her Republican friends barely get any work done at all. I called some of you know, my colleagues, uh, former colleagues uh, in Washington today, and they were like, I don't know what I'm in for today, but it's going to be it's very disenchanting. And that's not what she I have a lot of work to look forward to. So when I am elected to be your next Congresswoman, I'll put in 